Rich, you just alluded to Tuesday morning. I want to go there for a second. Mm -hmm. Your particular reality show comes on Monday nights. Right. And I'll never forget speaking to you many years ago because you were willing to do things I was, you know, I, I wouldn't be successful on reality TV. Mm -hmm. You've been extremely successful. Tuesday morning, I remember you telling me this. Sean, I hate waking up on Tuesday morning. Social media is going crazy. Morning show radio is going crazy. People are just slinging mud at my name. It's just so much talk. Number one, how long did it take for you to adjust to being in the public eye and secondly, how long did it take for you to adjust? Because you have to be, you have to be somebody who, 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 like when we were young and our parents tell us sticks and stones break your bones, but words that never hurt me, you, that, that's easier said than done. How long did it that's take for you to adjust to these, these just words? Say what you want to say. I'm making money. It, well, first of all, When I used to have those conversations with you, it was because I was having a hard time dealing with it. Because as much as we were lived in the public eye, working at Bad Boy and being out in the clubs every night and people knowing exactly who we were, it wasn't the same thing as a, as a, as a national bombardment of crying on the bridge or whatever the case may be. That bothered me for years. It bothered me, it still bothers me to this day. At times I find myself going on Twitter, Instagram and trying to, and maybe arguing with people. Then I realize, what am I doing? Like, at some point you have to be comfortable enough in what you deem to be your success. People are like, yo, you lost all your musical credibility. You lost this, oh my God, you out here with these birds, you doing A, B, C, and E. But you know what? In my heart of hearts, I know that I can talk to Sean Perez, who knows Richie Dollars, who named Richie Dollars, Richie Dollars, and can have a conversation. I'm never gonna lose my credibility to the people who I ever had credibility for or to. I have to understand that. And people have to understand that. So if, you're, if your home isn't, I guess, if your home isn't in place and you really are worried about what other people are saying, it's going to bother you forever. Because there's not a day you're going to wake up and you're going to go to social media and somebody's not saying something negative. Because you got to understand that that's just what they do. There's somebody in Chicago right now that looked at me and was like, yo, this clown happening. And then they're on social media and they're typing it in and they're hitting me up and they're telling me how much of a clown I am. And that's just bothers. I mean, you want to argue with that person, but the reality is you're giving them what they want. You're giving them the attention that they want. It took me a long time to understand that this is what I signed up for. And I tell people all the time, I don't get mad when people be like, nigga, you old, you whack, you was music industry. You wasn't in no music. I signed up for this. I signed up to go on TV and for people to forget about my musical past because that's what happens when you're 10 years removed from doing anything of substance. I've been doing reality TV for the last 10 years. So anybody who knows Richie Dollars today is going to know Richie Dollars from Love and Hip Hop. They're not going to know Rich Dollars from Bad Boy unless I get on the phone, talk to you, talk to Kid Joe, talk to such and such, all these random DJs from all over the country who knew me and knew my get down. That's how I at times ground myself because I got to go back to the people that actually know who you are. And if you haven't lost your credibility to them, how am I going to get mad at a girl who was 10 years old when I started this and she's 20 years old now and she don't know that I broke all these records, that we broke all these records at Bad Boy, Jock, Cassie, uh, Cherry, all of these people. They don't know that. They don't know that. So it's, it's, it, would be, it would be counterproductive for me to be mad at them for coming at me about who I am and what I've become when I signed up for it. So just know what you're signing up for. And, and if you want to hold on to it, and that's a number one problem with a lot of artists that do these reality shows. They come on this and they're trying to hold on to this artistry that's been gone. Bro, you ain't hot no more. You ain't been hot in 12, 13 years. So stop trying to come on here with this demeanor or this persona that you so hot and you the hot artist. Nigga, you ain't been hot in 15 years. You're a reality dude now. Like, you're a reality dude now. So when you accept that, move forward with that, make your money based on that, the tweets and stuff don't really bother you because 
The only reason you're going to be bothered by saying somebody saying you're, you're an old whack rapper is if that you're still thinking you're a young hot rapper. That's how you, that's what bothers you. And that's what I've learned to do. People say, oh, bad boy, God, you wasn't that bad. All right, well, that's cool. That's cool because now I'm 12 years deep on loving hip hop. It's a whole nother life. It's a whole nother life for me. And I can't get mad at it because I chose it. Do you have, and I guess I'm asking this, just knowing you as a person and also for somebody who's just looking in, do you have regrets about doing this show? About putting your life out there, about exposing the innermost details of your personal life? Are there regrets that you have in what do you do to protect your mental health? And what advice can you give to somebody who may be starting this journey on what you've learned and how they can protect their mental health early? Do I have regrets? Absolutely. I have regrets every day I wake up and I wonder what would have happened if we still did the musical thing and, and we were, and where would we be today had I just stayed the path and stayed the course of what we were doing back then? Um, then I look and I say, you know what, you've made, you've, you've made it, you've, you're successful at what you're doing. You've made a lot of money at what you're doing. You've been able to provide for yourself and live in, in 12 years, 10 years have gone by and that you've never wanted for anything. So you have to almost say, you know, it was in the cards for me. And then I look at the music industry and I also look and I say a lot of things have gone on in the music industry. It's really, really almost down to a crawl now, right? And people lost jobs. And then you look back and you'd be like, would that have been a safer thing? Maybe, maybe not. Because we don't know what God has in store for us from day to day, much less 10 years later. So for me to go back and in hindsight say, I regret this choice. I'm not going to say I regret this choice. I'm going to say I have regret choices within this choice. If I had things to do over again, I would have done them differently. But then I wouldn't be Rich Dallas, right? If I went to Bad Boy and I, even if, we could have the same conversation about music. If I went in and you say, yo, Rich, do you regret the things that you did when you were running out in clubs and doing this every night? Doing this and doing that. And all the things that I did wrong that probably only me and you know about. I would regret them if I could do them again, but they also made me who I am. So at the end of the day, you have to be comfortable enough in your own skin. Don't do this reality thing because if you're not comfortable in your own skin, if you're not comfortable with who you are, the shit is going to eat you up. The people are going to eat you up. The social media is going to eat you up. The, the radio morning shows are going to eat you up. And if you're not cool with who you are and the decisions that you make in life and what you are trying to accomplish, then you're going to lose your mind and you will not be able to maintain mental health. You will absolutely go crazy. You will absolutely lose your mind trying to fight and argue and <laughs> tweet people and, you know, all day and all night. The shit just becomes too time consuming and too strenuous on your, on your mind that you, you, you're going crazy. You just have to take it for what it is. Have you ever sought therapy or is it just you? Sh I'm just trying to get to what are your practices no. for protecting yourself? You, you know, do you I've talk to somebody? Do you just shut down and close out the world? Um, I used to shut down and close out the world. I, you know, you remember when I used to go to Miami and I would tell you, we, we would talk and I would be walking around and be like, yo, Sean, this is the most therapeutic thing in the world. I'm not dealing with nobody. I live a bunch of, around, around a bunch of old white Russians. They don't know who I am. And I don't have to deal with it. And I just, in my, in my, I'm in Miami and I'm, and it's cool. But then you start to realize that you can't just do that for three, four months out of the year. You just take, take yourself out of civilization. So what's therapy for me is talking to people like you or, or Ron Stewart, the people that I know that know my past and they know you for who you are or your family members for that matter. But they know who you are and what you've done. And we can have conversations that aren't reality show related that kind of puts you back and it kind of keeps you grounded. But that's what works for me. I, don't, I can't tell you what works for the next person because a lot of people within this, within this reality world, they don't have the infrastructure that I have. They don't have somebody they can call. They don't have the, the mom that they can go back and have. So it, it kind of weighs on them. 
And then also another thing, be very careful what you ask for because starting is not always an amazing thing. Everybody knowing who you are and what you're doing at all times of the day is not always what you want. You want the attention, but at the same time, it's not always the best thing for your mental health. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.